What's up everybody? Let's talk about using the Raspberry Pi 400 as your only computer right after this. The Pi 400 can actually do a lot more than what most people think it can do or is capable of. It's gonna be good for your everyday user. So it's not gonna be good for people who are into playing like games or someone who does intense uh, video editing or anything that's gonna require a lot of CPU power. It is gonna be good for students, people who surf the web, check email. Uh, you can do photo editing. You could do video editing, but uh, it's not very good on here uh, with something like Caden Live. Uh, as you can see, we're running Ubuntu. We're just gonna run through some applications that most people would use every day just to show you that it does work. It is effective and it does get the job done. <clears throat> Firefox works good. We were able to open up YouTube. We're gonna open up Chromium real quick. Chromium works well. That's gonna be your uh, open source version of Google Chrome. We're gonna go ahead and load a YouTube video and we're gonna see that this is gonna play just fine. And so the whole point of this video is just to show you guys that this does work um, and it works rather well for what it is. So this is not overclocked. This is factory straight out of the box, running Ubuntu um, ARM version. And every app that you would need is offered in the software store. There are other repositories that you can add and different things that you can download uh, for this. We're gonna cover uh, a little bit of stuff in Ubuntu, and then we're gonna switch over to M Manjaro Linux and show you guys that you basically can get the same apps and everything runs the same there. And then we'll finish up with showing Twister OS. Uh, now I can tell you just from experience that Ubuntu is the most pretty out of all of them, but it's also the most resource heavy. So if you feel that when you watch this video that it's kind of laggy or to, to your liking, it's just too slow, uh, you could overclock it uh, and that would help a little bit, but then at the same time, uh, it might be better or more beneficial to go with a different distribution. Enough about that, let's get into it. So we just saw Thunderbird worked good. Uh, this is gonna be LibreOffice Writer, which is uh, just a alternative to Microsoft Word. And as you can see here, it works fine. There is absolutely no lag. It's feature rich. I actually also use this while trying to multitask with a couple different web browser tabs open. I had no problems. Uh, <clears throat> Next, we're gonna see Rhythmbox, and that's gonna be an application that's going to allow you to play your personal collection of music if, uh, if you're not into any of the streaming services like Spotify and so forth. Next, I just wanted to show you guys what the, the folder system looks like. So you have all the main stuff here, your documents, downloads, pictures, all that's gonna be here. It's all gonna function just like it would on Mac OS or uh, any other desktop PC if, if you use Windows. <clears throat> the applications menu looks very elegant. It looks a lot like Launchpad does on Mac OS. And as we can see here, LibreOffice, we're gonna open that up real quick. So we now, this is uh, alternative to Microsoft Excel. It works well, I actually use this uh, for myself personally without any issues. Real quick, let's take a look at the settings just to show you guys that even though this is an ARM distribution, uh, it has all the settings and features that you'd be able to change on an x86 or full desktop version of Linux. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I really appreciate everybody who watches these videos. I try really hard to make content that's helpful and useful to people. Next up, we're gonna change gears. We're gonna switch over to Manjaro Linux and just show you, you know, some applications running in that if you choose to use this uh, operating system instead of Ubuntu. For the most part, you can run all the exact same uh, pieces of software. So we're gonna do a Vivaldi web browser and show you that that'll load a, a YouTube video just fine. Then we're gonna kind of transfer over to some apps that I didn't open in Ubuntu and show you that uh, GIMP, which is gonna be your photo editor or Adobe Photoshop alternative, 
that loads up a picture and works just fine. Alternatively, if you don't want to use something that's as complex as GIMP, uh, there is a program called MyPaint, which is similar to using like Microsoft Paint uh, that you could use to edit photos as well. That opened up and worked fine without any, without any issues either. If you want to play any videos, uh, I personally like VLC Media Player, so that's what we're going to load up here. We're just going to show you a 1080p trailer. It loads fine. Um, there's no stuttering or frame loss. Uh, there are other video players that you can use. This is just the one that I happen to prefer. But for the purposes of the video, I just wanted to show you that the Pi 400 is capable of playing HD video without any stuttering or, or issues of that nature. Next up, I want to show you guys that you can use a webcam with this. So I just have a, a cheap webcam from Amazon hooked up to this. I can link that in the description below. As you can see here, it, it does work. Manjaro Linux comes with uh, LibreOffice pre-installed by default. You can uninstall it uh, from the, the add remove app function and install a different one if by chance you do not like this one. Uh, <clears throat> since we already went over most of that in the Ubuntu section, I just want to show you that it works here as well. So we're going to open up the Impress presentation really quick. And then I just want to show you that we can load a template and uh, type on that template without any kind of, of lag or issues. For anybody that likes to store or use ebooks on their computer, uh, there's a piece of software called Calibre that will allow you to uh, manage and uh, read your ebooks on your computer. And so we're just going to show you that real quick here. For all you coders out there, or, or maybe you're just a student taking classes that require you to code, there is a text editor available for this, and it is called Code. And I'll just show you how this works real quick here. The add remove software function is really easy here. Um, you can browse applications. This is where I installed all the stuff for this video. <clears throat> There's lots of other stuff available as well. Uh, if you work with vector you, images, you can use Inkscape. RetroArch will give you all your emulators. Shotwell is your uh, photo manager. And then for anybody that needs kind of a pseudo FaceTime, iMessage replacement, Telegram is uh, cross platform. And you can do all of the same functionality as far as texting. Uh, and webcamming of sorts. Okay, from here we're gonna switch over to Twister OS. And this is actually what we use um, for, for our port Pi 400. And I just wanted to show you, it has a lot of really cool stuff that's right out of the box. So you're able to play some old PC games. You do need to own copies of all of these games in order to make them work, but you can play Duke Nukem 3D, Half-Life, Quake 1, and I just wanted to kind of show you uh, a couple of these running. So we'll show Duke Nukem 3D here, windowed. <clears throat> when I try to play Duke Nukem 3D full screen, it is kind of laggy even with the resolution turned down, but if you play it in a window, even if you're trying to make the window a little bit bigger than what I have here, it plays absolutely fine, um, no issues. One thing worth mentioning is this is overclocked at 2.2 gigahertz, and you can see that in the upper right-hand corner of the desktop. 
and that was only for Twister OS. So the previous two operating systems that we covered, we were running factory stock right out of the box. And now we'll switch over and show you guys Quake 1. Um, that does run fine uh, full screen. This is just the shareware version. I do own this game, but for whatever reason, I can't find the, the disc to pull the required files off to put them on the Pi 400. Next, I just wanted to show everybody that if you're a student or you're teleworking for your job, that Zoom is available and that you can uh, use that. So earlier I had that webcam from Amazon hooked up in the program Cheese just to show you that it worked. And it works perfectly fine here. The webcam that I actually have has a built-in microphone and they both worked with Zoom uh, right out of the box, no issues. I didn't have to install any drivers to get this to work. Uh, it was literally just plug and play. And you'll see here that I'm able to get everything uh, up and running. Just to avoid any confusion here with Zoom, so I'm using my cell phone to be the host for the, the meeting, which you'll see here, that's the, the bottom picture right here that I'm waving at, and then the webcam that's connected to the Raspberry Pi 400 is right there at the top that I'm, I'm waving at right now. And as you can see, they both work, uh, and there was no problems. So the last thing I wanted to show you guys uh, before we wrap this up is Twister OS allows you to change the theme and all of these are built in. So whether you like Mac OS or Windows 10 or it doesn't matter, you have a bunch of different themes you can pick from and it's as simple as just clicking on one. So for this, I'm just gonna show you, we're currently using the Twister OS default theme and we're gonna switch it over to Nighthawk, which is gonna give us like a Windows 10-esque look. And, <clears throat> and we're gonna restart and I'll show you what that looks like in a second. And here we go. So as you can see, we the icons changed, the bars now at the bottom, and it kind of looks more like Windows. And I think that's a really awesome feature of this operating system. You can kind of customize it to your liking. But that about wraps it up for this one, guys. Uh, let me know what your favorite operating system for the Pi 400 is in the comments below. And if there's anything that you guys would like to see, uh, whether it's Pi 400 related or tech related, uh, hit me up in the comments for that one too. I think that you get a lot of value for this for 100 bucks, and it's extremely underrated. Until next time, peace.